Okay, in our previous problem, we looked at uh, calculating the total hardness, carbonate hardness, and non-carbonate hardness in a particular water system. And so we went through these detailed calculations, and using a bar diagram, we're able to determine uh, all these things on a milliequivalents uh, per liter and as a milligrams per liter as CaCO3. So the next step uh, statement uh, for this problem is to determine... how much lime and or soda ash is required to soften this water and what I mean by how much uh, let's look at let's do this in milliequivalents per liter basis we could certainly calculate how much it is on a kilograms or whatever basis if we knew what the flow was of the water treatment plant and perhaps the chemical efficiency of the process and the purity of the materials. But we'll just keep this real simple and just um, calculate what the milliequivalents per liter uh, basis is. So to do that we're going to need to know some information related to um, oh, water, you know, the water chemistry associated with and so to know the water chemistry I've got this uh, material I scanned from the FE exam uh, review uh, materials and let's see if we can zoom in on here. Okay, so I've got this, uh, and so this is from our FE exam review materials that's uh, provided uh, for the FE exam. And so we've got it's the basic lime softening equations that are uh, that are common here. And so our question is: Is there a net removal? of hardness. As a result of these reactions. And so let's start with reaction number one. And so we've got um, carbon dioxide removal. So we got CO2 in the water. So I'll highlight that as blue. CO2 in the water and we add our lime slurry, which I'll put in uh, yellow here. Lime slurry is added to it. And we get our calcium carbonate. And so for every, so, so there's no hardness here. We do add something to the water, but hence then we remove it from the water. So on a net removal, I'd have to say that there's no, there's no net removal of hardness. So we're not taking anything that I have, let's say in blue here, out of the water. Let's go to number two here. So reaction number two. And so we've got our, our calcium carbonate hardness. So this would be our Ca carbonate hardness. And so we've got calcium and so our calcium I've got underlined here in red and we add our lime in, into the water. Oops, and let's do that in yellow here. So lime into the water and we're removing at the end of the day two calcium. So we have one that's already in the water we added one to the water, but they're both taken out. So yes, there's a net removal. Yes, yes, there's a net removal. It takes one of these, one of these on a molar basis for this balanced equation, and we get two of those. And so for one uh, calcium carbonate in, in the water, we have one, it takes one uh, equivalence or one mole of calcium uh, CaOH2 or our lime slurry to be removed. And so I'd say that's a one-to-one -one, um, reaction. Calcium non-carbonate hardness removal. So this is our Ca non-carbonate hardness. So again, we have calcium. This time it's in the form of sulfate in our water, a non-carbonate uh, species. And this one we're, we're adding um, um, soda ash to the water. So I'll even put that in green or uh, purple even right here. So soda ash into the water. And then hence we got the calcium that is removed as a calcium carbonate and we have some excess sodium and excess sulfate that's uh, here. And so we had this in the water and then we're removing it in the water. So yes, there's a net removal of this. And so it's going to take one of these and, and it's going to, or if we had one of those, it's going to take one mole of uh, sodium Oh, the uh, soda ash from the water. So that is also a one-to-one -one removal. Magnesium carbonate hardness. All right, so we've got uh, magnesium in the water, and we had to add two 
of these uh, lime slurries in there to get it removed. And so at the end of the day, so we got one of these is out. We better hope we get that one out. Uh, and then we got our two calcium. So this uh, is going to take two of these limes to get that out. And uh, we do remove both those limes, thank goodness. And we remove that lime as a or the magnesium as a magnesium oxide uh, in solution. So yes, we do have a net removal, but it does take one magnesium and it takes two lime slurries to remove, so a one to two ratio. Lastly, the magnesium non-carbonate hardness. And so here's our magnesium sulfate this time. And here's our lime in the water. Uh, we got to add sodash in there as well. So let's do some accounting and make sure that everything's taken out. So we got one here. Uh, here's another hardness thing that we added into the water, the calcium, and we put in some uh, sodash. So at the end of the day, we got one calcium carbonate that's taken out. So that's that's good. That's gone. The magnesium that we started with has been taken out. Thank goodness. And we got a little bit of... Uh, and we've got uh, some sodium and some sulfate that's there. And so, yes, there's a net removal as well. And so for one of these magnesiums, it's going to take one lime slurry or one mole of that. And it's going to take one mole of uh, soda ash for this magnesium non-carbonate hardness. So what we got to do now is go back and look at our, our diagram. And we need to do some accounting to figure out how much lime and or soda ash is needed for each one of these constituents. So let's start with um, <clears throat> the carbonate hardness in our reaction. So let's actually let's start with the calcium. So let's just uh, how much calcium, what's the calcium species that we're going to need to remove? So let's uh, slide down here. And so let's look at the calcium carbonate hardness. And so if we look at uh, how much is in there, calcium carbonate hardness uh, so calcium carbonate hardness and so I'm going to uh, draw this I'm going to draw this again so hold on a second okay and so what I've done here is I've redrawn uh, this uh, bar diagram just so we have a clean slate to work with so our goal is to what's the calcium carbonate hardness so I'm going to have that in yellow the calcium carbonate hardness is, is this amount and so it looks like we have 3.7 milliequivalents per liter is what we have there. How much lime is there, or lime slurry is that going to require? So we have to go back and look at our fundamental equations. So for every mole of calcium carbonate hardness that we have in solution, we're going to need one mole of calcium hydroxide, or our quick lime. And so it's a one to one relationship there. So it's uh, for every mole or every milliequivalents per liter there, we're going to need 3.7 milliequivalents per liter of CaOH3, oops, excuse me, CaOH2 or a lime slurry. Now let's look at the calcium non carbonate hardness. I'm going to look at this in blue. Calcium non-carbonate hardness. Do we have any that's there? Calcium non-carbonate hardness. Uh, looking at this bar diagram, it doesn't appear that we have any calcium non-carbonate. All the calcium we have in here is actually is complex with the carbonate. So I'll just put zero on here. If we did, we could certainly go back and look at these equations and find out it would be a one-to-one. -one. Here we'd have uh, soda ash that we'd have to add to it and not, uh, not the lime slurry. Next one would be the magnesium carbonate hardness. And so I'll do that one in blue since I didn't use blue before. Magnesium carbonate hardness. And so that's going to be this amount that is complexed with the carbonate. So it looks like 4.9 minus 3.7 would be oh, 1.2, is that right? So so that would be 1.2 milliequivalents per liter. And now let's look up here and see what uh, indeed that uh, might be. And so that looks like that's going to be equation number four here. Oh, but it's a one to two relationship uh, with this. And so for every amount of magnesium carbonate hardness, it's actually going to take two of these calcium uh, hydroxide uh, lime slurries in this uh, system. So one to two. And so we need to multiply this times two. So times two 
would be equal to 2.4 milliequivalents per liter CaOH2 or our lime slurry that's going to be required. And then the last one here, so let's look at the magnesium non-carbonate hardness. And let's go ahead and do that in green here. So the magnesium non-carbonate hardness would be this amount of magnesium that is not complexed or associated with the carbonate. And so this would be, it looks like, 7.0 minus 4.9. 7.0 minus 4.9 looks like that would be 2.1 milliequivalents per liter. And so we go look at our fundamental reactions or equations here. And the magnesium non-carbonate hardness uh, looks like we need... Um, all right, so magnesium, so we got one of those, looks like just one of the limes, but we also have one soda ash that's in there. So it's a one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one relationship. So that's going to result in uh, two things. So that's going to be 2.1 milliequivalents per liter, milliequivalents per liter of CaOH2, but it's also going to require 2.1 milliequivalents per liter of Na2CO3 or soda ash. All right, so the total amount, so how much of this material are we going to need? And so again, for CaOH2, so the sum, let's just sum all these. That's going to be equal to, what is that going to be equal to? So 3.7, 2.4, 2.1, and so that would be equal to 8.2 milliequivalents per liter CaOH2. And then again, the sum, and I'll do this in uh, green here. So the sum for Na2CO3, our soda ash, and it looks like we just have one of those, which would be 2.1 milliequivalents per liter Na2CO3. Now, I know in our homework, uh, it's asking for the dose in kilograms per liter. So we can certainly, if we know the molecular weight of these, which we can easily calculate, perhaps the purity of these, which the problem statement asks for, and the flow rate uh, that is at the unit operation, we could certainly figure out how many kilograms per day using this milliequivalents per liter basis. So that, in a nutshell, is uh, how to solve uh, the lime and uh, soda ash dose for uh, water softening. And so again, using these fundamental equations that have been provided on this FE exam review material, it's also in the textbook and lots and lots of other sources that go over the chemistry. And so we're using this complex chemistry to solve uh, some fairly simple uh, problems. So refresh, review this, and uh, get prepared for your homework that will be due here shortly. Thank you.